tell you about the shirt I am wearing. It says pray until prayer. I know. <laughs> But yeah, this shirt I'm wearing, it says pray until prayer praise. And you can find this shirt in many different colors, other apparels as well, on www.kftchurch.com. Shop KFT Apparel. If you guys pray, if you guys are in praying ministry, the praying business, why not also wear something that also reps that? And Sister Okuba's testimony clearly shows that prayer actually works. And I know that if I know I believe in something, why not also have it on my body, you know? So shop KFT Apparel. And so today we're going to get into our last testimony of the day. And you guys, this testimony, I really hope, encourages you, pushes you. If you're not yet convinced that prayer works, if you're not yet convinced that God works, if you're not yet convinced that, honestly, serving God wholeheartedly works, I think this testimony will do it for you. So let's go ahead, and we're going to have our next um, testimony person join us. So just, this is a great time to take a sip of water, a great time to really, you know, stretch forth back even more, because we're going to get really into it with this one. Let me know. Are we we're ready? And we are live. Ready. Okay. <laughs> so, hi, guys. So, this is our last testimony of the day, in-house testimony. Um, so, can you go ahead and introduce yourself to us, please? Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Mary. I am a member of um, Kendom Food Tabernacle International Ministries. I am the HOM of the food department. Let us know, H-O-M in the house. <laughs> and just honestly, just to start off, why are you here today? I am here to share the goodness of the Lord and what God has done for me through Pastor and First Lady Lady Leslie. Yes, yes. And can you just let us know first, what was the issue? What was the problem? I was filling my NCLEX exams for the past six years. It's been a struggle. It's been a challenge, and by God's grace, God used our pastor, Dominic, and our first lady um, to just help me and strengthen me throughout the journey to pass um, my NCLEX exam. So I'm here to encourage others, those who are going through the same thing, or those who wanted to give up on life or give up on God. That's good. That's good. Okay. And um, so what, what did God do for you, though? So I understand you said you've been trying to take your NCLEX for the past six years, so 2014 to 2020, and what did God do for you? How, how did God help you pass your NCLEX? Um, in so many ways, um, God truly um, connected me um, to passing First Lady through one of our sisters, Sister Esther, now the head of of KFT. Um, I remember, I think at that time I had failed the NCLEX exams um, the fifth time, and I was in my room crying, and I didn't know who to call to comfort me. So I reached out to Sister Esther, and she's the one that connected me to Pastor and First Lady. And I remember that night when I spoke to Pastor and First Lady, they spoke to me for over two, hour, two hours, um, praying with me, encouraging me, giving me the word, and you know, um, just letting me know that it is well. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it all started. And, okay, so exactly how many times did you take your NCLEX, though, in that span of six years? Girl, a lot of times. Um, not once, not twice, not three, not four, not five, yes. Not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not ten, even. Jesus. Not, not 12, not, not 14. Jesus. But I took this exam 15 times, failed it 15 times. Mm. And to the glory of God... I passed it the 16th Amen. time um, this past Friday Jesus. to the glory of God. Amen. It's been a humbling experience. Amen. Yes. Amen. And honestly, off the bat, <laughs> as a student. God is good, you know. God, yeah. <laughs> as a student, honestly, mercy. I cannot imagine taking a test one time, twice, three times. Lord. And I think for the average person, you kind of stop at the fourth or fifth time. That's right. What gave you the the strength to keep preserving all the way until the 16th time. Believing God, paying for these exams, because I believe that NCLEX costs money. dollars each. Right, so that's over $3,000 3, $3, That's spent. right. So what gave you the perseverance to keep going, even past that 14th mark? I'll say faith. Mm. Um, I know it's easy to say just faith. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, just going through this journey... I knew that one day, one day, like Pastor right. always say, one day, one day, mm -hmm. 
you know, some way, somehow, mm-hmm. you will come out victorious. Yeah. And so in the back of my mind, I knew that one day, mm-hmm. me too, I will boldly walk into this hospital right. and practice as a registered nurse mm-hmm. that God has called me um, mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. And so faith, yes. Yeah, yeah, thank faith. you. And the fact that you even mentioned um, Pastor Dominic and, you know, quoting him just now, what ways in, did God use Pastor Dominic and First Lady Leslie Osei for this testimony right now? You know, how have they been a blessing to you ever since you joined the ministry? Man, I can't even describe it. Yeah. Um, I think God just ordained them just for me mm. in this season. Mm. They have truly been a blessing unto yeah. my life. I cannot even imagine. I've been to different churches, um, mm-hmm. but this, it felt different. I know sometimes they say that um, why KFT, why KFT? Mm-hmm. Because I, um, since I encountered our pastor and our first lady, mm-hmm. things has really changed in my life. Yeah. My prayer life has changed. Um, my walk with Christ has changed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not the same. I'm not yeah. the same person. Yeah. So a lot has happened, and they've truly been a blessing. Yeah. They pray for me, yeah. fast with me. I don't know how many pastors will call you and dissect the Bible yeah. and teach you how to forgive your neighbors and mm. be your brother's keeper. Um, mm. Our pastor is just amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and then also with that, mm-hmm. um, in meeting them, what can you say with the testimony? What did you do? You know, obviously, for exams, you have to study, you have to prepare. But mm-hmm. what additional things did you do? Did you fast? Did you pray? Uh, did Pastor and First Lady lead you in any fastness? Did they, you know, what kind of guidelines did they set for you to be able to help you break through with this exam? Um, it's always a blessing to, to have a prophet in the house, as yes. we all know. Our First Lady is a prophet. Um, she hears from God a lot. And um, through, the, um, through the Holy Spirit, um, they reached out to me and um, told me that um, I need to go on a fast, which I agreed to do. Um, and previously, I've been praying. And I think um, previously, I've been leaning on my own understanding. But this time around, I wanted to give it all to God. Like, God, it's, it's you or no one else. And so this last time, um, Pastor told me I have to fast for five days which I did, um, I mean, to the glory of God, at KFT, we fast for 21 days. So fasting for, tw- for, for five days was just a breeze by, by the mm-hmm. lid of the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. Mm-hmm. So that was not hard to do. Mm-hmm. And so Pastor really um, helped me through this. Right. He really did, and, mm-hmm. fir- and First Lady as well. Because mm-hmm. God really um, spoke through First Lady. I remember yeah. two weeks before the exams, mm-hmm. um, I was laying down in prayer, and I was waiting to hear from God. I was just laying down, listening to worship music, listening, and just waiting in mm-hmm. waiting mode. And then my phone, I received a notification from First Lady, and um, I received a text, and she said, Mary, um, the Lord said in this season, if you be, um, you, if you be true to yourself and believe in God, in God with all the fiber of your being, um, you will come out of quarantine victorious. Mm-hmm. God says, rejoice. Wow. And at that moment, I, I knew that God is real. The God of KFT is too Amen. real. Like, mm-hmm. God really, mm-hmm. you know, used um, his um, prophet to speak to me. Mm-hmm. And so God is real. Yeah, you knew too what real. you knew when you knew when That's you knew. That's right, girl. That's wow. right. Um, and so, I'm just sorry. I'm just very <laughs> shocked and amazed that you really stuck through 16 times. I just want girl. people to really understand that. She didn't take the test one, two, three, four, like 16 times, over $3,000 spent. That's right. I know at a certain point you were discouraged. I know at a certain point you wondered, where is God? Is the prayer working? Are the seeds working? Is Mercy. my offering, my servings, are they working? So at those points, those moments where you had, when you just, you're, you know, you were lacking a little bit in your faith, you were discouraged, how did you keep on going? Hmm. Um, so I knew that God has not given up on me, which is easy to say, you know, God will not give up on you. Don't give up. Um, in those times, I knew that if I continue to align myself with what God has for me mm-hmm. and I'm obedient to him, eventually God is going to show out and show off. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I just had to, this is not a time for me to go into the world and drink. This is a time for me to keep near the cross and just stay at his feet until he says, Mary, it's time to go. Mm-hmm. Or and until he says, Mary, it's time for me to bless you. Mm-hmm. And so just being at his feet and just being at church. And honestly, KFT really, really makes it easier yes, it for does. people mm-hmm. like me to get closer to God. Yeah. Because Fridays, we have fire night. We pray until prayer praise. 
and Wednesday, um, on studies. Sundays, yeah, Wednesdays we mm-hmm. do Bible studies, we dissect the word, mm-hmm. you know, we feed on the word. Mm-hmm. On Sundays, a lot of praises and worship. Mm-hmm. And so it keeps you near the cross. KFT yes, keeps you near the cross. Yes, it does. So that really helped me mm-hmm. um, in this process. Okay. So I want to go back a little bit. So okay. 2014 all the way to 2020, mm-hmm. while you were waiting and trusting in God to pass this NCLEX, what were you doing those six years? Man. So um, I joined KFT. Also, even along with that, how were you preparing for the preparation of passing your NCLEX? Okay. So I joined KFT in 2017, April of 2017, um, during Prayer Fest. That was my, pre- my first Prayer Fest. Prayer Fest? Prayer Fest. Yeah, that's my favorite. So um, through deliverance, mm. deliverance, I mean, deli- we have deliverance and we have deliverance. <laughs> so The second through, part is what you got. Yeah, Deliver- the deliverance. So okay. through deliverance, past, um, God really truly used our pastor mm-hmm. and our first lady to deliver me mm-hmm. from a lot of afflictions. Yeah. Um, I had suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, I was depressed at one point, mm-hmm. which the enemy thought he was going to use that to kill mm-hmm. me. But in, through that, I fell in love with cooking. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a chef as well. Quaba yeah. cuisine, That's guys. right. <laughs> and so, you know, um, I fell in love with cooking through that process. Um, I My walk with Christ became very tight. Mm-hmm. I, you know, um, I was doing a lot in... In, in the work of God, I was serving. Yep. Um, sometimes I will, you know, go to church. Or I'll go to work on Friday, drive all the way from Pennsylvania mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Connecticut for church. And wow. people might think I'm crazy. Not. Um, through the rain and snowstorms, mm-hmm. we will still come to church. Mm-hmm. And people will be like, girl, why are you driving all the way to Connecticut? Because that is where... I was delivered. That mm-hmm. that is my Shiloh, mm-hmm. and so people be mm-hmm. wondering why are you going to church at KFT? You drive all the way, you drive two hours, mm-hmm. but I just let them know that that is where my deliverance came from. Um, so that was some of the stuff I did. Um, I was serving in the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. I took review courses, and mm-hmm. they were not cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the review courses, I guess, did not help. Mm-hmm. But you know, um, here I am. Here you are. Yeah, um, yeah. So what else were you doing? Did you further your education? Did you go ahead and say, okay, maybe I need to get another degree? Um, what kind of, did you go ahead and work? Did you only have one job, two jobs? Like, how I'm, were you occupying your time? Girl. Okay, I will start with the education. Um, if, um, some of you might not know, but I do have an associate in science, and I have a bachelor's degree in nursing by God's grace, and I have a master's degree in healthcare administration. So through wow, that, three degrees. <laughs> It's not done. <laughs> but by God's grace, yes, I have that under my belt. Mm-hmm. And um, through that process, mm-hmm. in, I remember in 2016 when I found out that I didn't pass in August, I'm like, man, what do I do with my life right now? Um, and so, you know, I enrolled myself in a graduate program, mm-hmm. decided to, because without the license, you cannot even do your right. MSN. Mm-hmm. And so I had to take another path. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I knew in the back of my head that I would end up in the hospital somewhere. Yeah. So why not go for healthcare management mm-hmm. and be in a, a higher position? Mm-hmm. And so that is what I did. Mm-hmm. And so um, through that process, I was able to obtain all three degrees mm-hmm. by, by God's grace. Yeah. And also I did a lot of charity work, you know, mm-hmm. um, helping other people also mm-hmm. helped. And, um, yeah, it's just studying and trusting God. Mm-hmm. Wow. So not only do you have one degree, two degrees, but you have three degrees. For the glory of God. And I just want you to really quickly touch on the fact that you have three degrees, so you furthered your education. Yes, I did. What were some of the pe- people's responses to you? Because I'm thinking <laughs> if someone has three degrees, and I know them to have always had the desire to want to be a nurse, right. why is she six years later still not a nurse? Is it that she was lazy? She wasn't studying? You know, I'm pretty sure there was some mockery involved. Can you just talk Mercy. a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I believe NCLEX is the only exam that when you don't pass, people might think you are not studying. Just because mm. somebody did not pass on exams does not mean no. did mm-hmm. not study. Put in the work. Mm-hmm. But um, unfortunately, that's how other people will see it. Right. But through this process, yes, I've been mocked. Mm. Um, you know, people think because Mary is cooking, she's making jollof and chicken yeah. all the time. Mm. What happened to the, the nursing degree? Right. What happened to it? Right. Um, there was one point where I met one of you know, our African aunties in the store, and she was basically mocking me, asking, oh, so what hospital do you work at? Every time they want to know what hospital. All nurses don't work in hospitals, by the way. We have school nurses, okay? Let them know. Traveling nurses, okay? Let them know. Um, Consulting, okay? So all all nurses do not work in hospitals. So please, let's quit asking those questions. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have a question coming in, and I just want to insert that in there really quickly. Okay. I think it's a good one. So was there any point where you thought, maybe mm-hmm. this isn't the direction that God wants me to go? <laughs> I should ask you quick while I'm at That's funny. test number five or seven or 10 or 12. Okay. So through the process of me filling these exams, I was having dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I would see myself... Um, in a hospital wearing scrubs, Mm -hmm. um, running to to save someone's Mm -hmm. life or buying scrubs. Mm -hmm. And recently, um, last month, actually, I had a dream that I passed the test. And so these were all, you know, God confirming that I I am born to do this. But, you know, sometimes Mm -hmm. the enemy will come in and discourage you and say, you're not, you know, you're not born to do this. And that's something that um, I had mine attacks, you know, Mm -hmm. um, taking the NCLEX exams. Um, I remember... Yeah, this is really interesting. So every time, I think after the fourth time when I took the test, and the fifth time when I entered the center, the enemy started talking to me. Mm -hmm. I started seeing numbers on the locker. So we have a locker room where you have to check in. Mm -hmm. So I I started seeing different numbers on the lockers, Mm -hmm. and I see number 7, 8, 10, 12, 15. And at that moment, the enemy said, this is how many times you're going to take the exams. And at that moment, I did not rebuke the enemy. I was very, I was afraid. Mm. And so... I guess I accepted it into my spirit. Mm. And even when I go to sit at my seat, sometimes I'll see number 10. Mm -hmm. And then the enemy will say, okay, this is how many times you're going to take this Mm -hmm. test. But um, through our pastor and our first lady again, you know, they gave me the wisdom. Pastor said, the enemy don't have time to always come to the center 15 times to tell you, Mary, (laughs) you're going to fail. He already programmed it. It's it's there Mm -hmm. waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And so this time around, I I put on the full armor of God and I went. I'm like, listen. Devil, I don't have time for you. And it's funny because this time around when I got there, I saw the number 242. I'm like, Jesus. no, you, you got to be kidding me. There's no way I'm taking the exams 242 times. Even if that's what God wants me to go through to prove his glory, mm-hmm. then I'm ready to, to go mm-hmm. through that. Mm-hmm. But I rebuked the enemy. As soon as I got there, I mm-hmm. saw that number. I'm like, you are a liar. Mm-hmm. Devil, you are a liar. So liar. is your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> When I got there, my mm-hmm. seat did, recently when I when I went to take the test, my seat number was eight. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, devil, you said this before. Mm-hmm. You did tell me you told me before that I'm eight. going to mm-hmm. take this test eight times mm-hmm. and fail. Guess what? I passed that number. Mm. Now I'm at 15. So now what's mm. up? What's up? Like what's up? What's like up? what's next? <laughs> you're a liar. Like right. you've lied before, mm-hmm. and now you're lying again. Mm-hmm. It shows that you're a liar. Mm-hmm. And so I started talking back to the enemy. Mm-hmm. And I started rebuking the enemy. Even though they said we have to wear masks because of COVID-19. Listen, I put my mask like below and I started cut buying, okay? Amen. I was blowing in tongues amen, amen. and telling the enemy you're a liar. Mm-hmm. So is your grandfather. <laughs> His great grandfather. That's right. Um, thank you. Um, so honestly, listen to your testimony. I think it could come off to people as, okay, so she prayed. She fasted, she mm-hmm. did the things of God, mm-hmm. and then God answered her. But I would be foolish not to ask, what sacrifices did you make along the way? I'm pretty sure there are some prices you had to pay in order for this breakthrough to happen. I have. Um, I remember last year during KFT Marriage Fast, mm-hmm. I challenged myself to do the 21 days. I challenged myself to do a dry fast, mm-hmm. which I've never done in my life, mm-hmm. entire life. And mm-hmm. KFT, you will be challenged to do things you've never, ever done in mm-hmm. your life. It's just to, you know, test your fate. Mm-hmm. And by God's grace, I was able to do 18 days dry. Jesus. 18 days dry. Sacrifice. So, um, you know, that's some of the things that I did. I have, I tied faithfully by, by God's grace. Um, even though sometimes I fail, but I trusted in God and I keep tithing. I keep sowing my seed. Whenever the Holy Spirit prompts me to sow a seed, I sow it. Um, even I sow into other people's lives, mm-hmm. even other students, other nurses right. who are working. I sow into their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, when I was about to take the exams, which I took on a Friday. Mm-hmm. So Friday was when I got paid and I wanted to pay my, uh, my tithe. So that morning before I went to take my test, I said, Lord, as I, receive, as I release my tithe, may you release my license. Amen. So that was the prayer I prayed on Friday before mm-hmm. I took the test. I said, Lord, as I release my tithe, I am, I'm tithing faithfully. As I release mm-hmm. this tithe, may you also release my license. Mm-hmm. So I think that also provoked God mm-hmm. for him to release that license. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, definitely. Mm-hmm. And what would you say was the toughest decision you made concerning this exam 
in order for this breakthrough to come through? Was there something that you had to do that God was calling you to do and you thought, wow, no, this one is drastic? Um, it was not even for this exams, you know. Mm-hmm. It was, I, think I, I think after the 10th time, I was challenged to empty my bank account. Jesus. Yes. So um, these are some of the, you know, sacrifices. Mm. The Holy Spirit said, you have given me, you, you've given me yourself physically, mm-hmm. spiritually. Mm-hmm. What, what about fi- financially? You wow. have not given me that. Yeah. And that is what I'm yearning for. That mm-hmm. is what I want. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, I'm like, Lord, all or nothing. Oh, so no. I, I emptied in my bank account, gave mm-hmm. everything I had to mm-hmm. God, you know, to be used for the kingdom, to mm-hmm. promote God's kingdom. Mm-hmm. And so after that, every... On t- uh, that was two years ago. I kept reminding God, remember the covenant that yeah. you have with me. Right. Remember that covenant. So right. every time I'm in any, any challenging situation, I mm-hmm. say, God, remember that seed. Remember me emptying my bank account. Remember me um, sowing, sowing seeds. Remember the charity work. Remember me serving in your house. Remember how people are mocking me, but I'm not giving up on you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit under your feet until you, you make, you know, my enemies my footstool like you promised me. Right. And so, you know, these are some of the things that I did. Yeah. Yeah. And if you had to kind of reflect and say two things that you truly think, like tangible things, whether it was prayer or whether it was a verse that you always kept in your spirit, two tangible things that kind of always kept you going, what would those two tangible things be? One was um, the Bible, the Word of God. Mm. Um, Joel chapter 2, mm-hmm. Restoration. Mm. Um, I truly believe that God was going to restore me and Amen. and. It doesn't matter how long it was going to take. Mm-hmm. I knew for a fact that one day, one day, like Pastor always says, some way, somehow, it, God is going to come through. Mm-hmm. Some way, somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long it was going to take. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what day or 2020, mm-hmm. 2030, but I knew right. deep down that God is going to restore me. Right. And so the word kept me, kept, you know. You grounded. Yes. Yeah. And um, the second thing that really kept me going is the two vessels that we have at KFT, mm-hmm. our pastor and our first lady. Like, mm-hmm. God used them so mightily that I, I cannot even afford to fail. I mm-hmm. cannot even afford to give mm-hmm. up. Like, the way they, they you know, they Pour push out. us, mm-hmm. you know, they pray for us, mm-hmm. they fast with us. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot even afford to fail them. Like, mm-hmm. it's embarrassing. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't even do that. Mm-hmm. And, like, when... When I take my test and I fail and I tell them, like, I feel so bad. I, that time, I didn't mm-hmm. even care about me failing. I just like, man, mm-hmm. I got to tell Pastor I fell mm-hmm. again and again. But, you know, they love us so much. Yeah. They didn't give up on me. Mm-hmm. They did not say, oh, Mary, not again. Yeah. Never did they ever say that to me, mm-hmm. like, Mary, oh, like, what happened? Not again. Right. They never blamed. They said, Mary, this will be your last time. Every mm-hmm. day, first they do say, Mary, mm-hmm. this is going to be the last time yeah. you're taking this test. It yeah. doesn't matter how many times I took it. Every time she would say, Mary, this is the last time you're taking it. And mm-hmm. I love her faith, you know. Mm-hmm. First lady is someone when, even when the glass is broken, mm-hmm. she'll tell you, oh, no, it's not broken. Mm-hmm. You know, just tape it. It's not broken. Mm-hmm. She has faith. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that really kept me going. Yeah, we thank God. That really yeah. also just reminds me that the love that God has for us, right. that's really truly reflective that they mm-hmm. are really honors and vessels of God. Right. Because God never, ever turns his back on us. That's right. God literally loves us with all of his being. Too much. That really goes to show the kind of vessels that we have in the house. So, right. Um, KFT all day. Yes, we are um, blessed. So, yeah. So, one thing that I do want to ask is, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure, I don't want to assume that everyone watching right now is a right. believer. I don't want to assume that everyone watch, watching right now has that faith, that same faith you had that right. carried you mm-hmm. from for six years now. Right. And so, what advice would you give to believers that are watching? How would you encourage them in the Lord? How would you encourage them to seek the Lord and to also trust that one day, one day, time right. and chance will also happen to them? Okay. One thing I want to say is God is real. It's, it's just easy to say, oh, God is real. God mm-hmm. would do it. Mm-hmm. But I honestly, I pray that each and every one of us will encounter God for ourselves. Right. You know, first lady always say, seek God for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, may God show out in your life in mm-hmm. such a way that you say, only God can do this. As you can see, only, only God, God can, can do, do this. this. Shop came to you know? <laughs> So it truly is only God. And mm-hmm. God is so real. Mm-hmm. And you know, spiritual things are really real. They're real. People might think Mar- Mary, maybe Mary's dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, why she not passing this exam? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. there were some battles, si- some silent battles that silent. I had to mm-hmm. fight mm-hmm. that nobody knew about mm-hmm. it. Some spiritual battles. Mm-hmm. Some deliverance had to go in. Right. Shout out to Pastor and First Lady. Mm-hmm. You know, some deliverance, like mm-hmm. serious deliverance. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about 
five minutes, like we rebuke, we the come out. deliverance. Yes. We have deliverance and we have deliverance. deliverance. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the deliverance yeah. that can take all day, yeah. four hours, <laughs> ten hours, yeah. that type of deliverance. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, spiritual things are real. God is real. Mm-hmm. And I honestly pray that we will all encounter God in our own special ways. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you Amen. for sharing that. Um, and then also, what else would you leave for other people who are in similar situations? Perhaps, you know, a lot of times exams are really something. You could go I to law you. school, but if you don't pass the bar, you That's can't right. practice the law. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people right now in similar situations, right. people who have dreams and aspirations, yes. people who want to attain things, but they aren't quite getting it. it is, it's, it's there, but it's far. Right. And they're still in that process that mm-hmm. you were six years ago. True. How would you keep them going? And so, um, you know, it's only God that knows our destiny. Right. Maybe in God's book, God wrote, like, Mary is destined to take this exam 16 times. Right. But I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. What if I gave up on the 10th time? Mm-hmm. I would never get to where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. What if I gave up even on the 15th time mm-hmm. and I say, you know what? 15, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I've spent $3,000 on the Ooh. exams already. Right. I'm not writing it again. Mm-hmm. Then what? You would not I, have passed the 16th time. I would time. never, ever be a nurse. Right. And so we don't know what God has for us. Mm-hmm. And that is why it is very important to seek God and mm-hmm. keep trusting him. Like, like, it doesn't matter how long. Mm-hmm. You know, the race is not to the swift. Mm-hmm. And when God give you an overtaking anointing, yep. you know, you can do it all. Right. Overtaking anointing. When God mm-hmm. move you from the back to the front. Mm-hmm. And so please do not give up. If you've taken exams three times and you failed, you, you are even better than me. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you that you know, you're not dumb. You're mm-hmm. smart. Mm-hmm. You will pass. Right. And so don't, don't give up. Even if you've taken it 20 times, I don't know what your story is, but I took it 16 times. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you, you're, not, you're not even there yet, mm-hmm. but I pray you don't get there because it's not fun, and I don't wish this for anyone, um, but please do not give up because God has not given up on you. And I know it's easy to say, oh, don't give up. It's, it is well, but it is well because... You're, you're hearing it from somebody who failed it and failed and failed. I have tasted it. Can mm-hmm. you imagine going, going through school and you've never failed a class before? Jesus. And you start to experience failure after time graduation time and people right. are looking forward to mm-hmm. where is Mary? What is she doing with mm-hmm. her life? All these questions. Mm-hmm. You can imagine. Yeah. You know? So um, I pray that you don't give up and mm-hmm. you hold on to the faith Amen. and you keep near the cross. This is not a time for us to do worldly things. Mm-hmm. But when you're going through challenges, this is a time to honestly seek God for mm-hmm. yourself. This, this should draw us closer to God, mm-hmm. but not away from God, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, yeah, that's my words of encouragement. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Mary has tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Yes. And I just have one last quick question for uh-huh. you, though. Knowing now what you know, that God truly did come through and God truly will come right. through, what would you say to yourself six years back? How then would you ch- change that, Mary, Man. to keep her pushing? Because I, I know that there's some people right now who are in that situation. Right. And something that you can tell them exactly that you right now, after getting the NCLEX license, right. mm-hmm. would tell them yeah. that then. It doesn't matter how many times you have to take an exam or try. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're doing. It might be mm-hmm. business. Um, I don't know how many times you've tried already. Mm-hmm. But for me, honestly, I was never, ever going to give up on it. If, it, if I had to take it 20 times or 30 times, which I was willing to do, um, I was going to keep going until God says stop. And so I was never, ever going to give up on it. So I don't know what number you are right now. I don't know how many times you've failed an exam, but please do not give up. Amen. Just keep going, keep going until God says stop. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Only God. Only God can do, can this. do this. Only God can do which this. Was said by Only God can do, do this. this. Which was Only said by our beautiful first lady. That's right. Leslie Only Jose. God can do, do this. this. And I just want to quickly read a comment because one of our viewers actually just even testified about you. She said, Mary, I love you. She is a smart girl. She was in my class, a real oh woman of faith. Mary, this is Rebecca from Keene University. People are saying that this is a powerful um, testimony. This is truly a God breakthrough. Bless you all. And so thank Thankfully, we really know that God is real because other people God have also real. seen her in her process yes. and can also testify that yes. indeed her faith is what really pushed her through. So That's we hope right. you guys are definitely encouraged. Thank you so much for joining thank me you, today. Thank you, Gladys. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to our very first Testimony Tuesday Live. I pray that every single one of these testimonies was truly a blessing to you. Um, before we go, if you guys 
um, feel led to sow into these testimonies, if you feel led to give offering into these testimonies, because honestly, what you sow is what you will reap. And I myself know that these testimonies are very encouraging. And so if you'd like to sow a seed, they will put up the flyer for you to um, see the different ways in which you can give and sow a seed offering as well. And also, guys, shop KFT Apparel, which is at www.kftchurch.com. It comes in many different colors. Honestly, my very favorite is this one, Pray Until Prayer Prays, because the bottom line of all these testimonies is that prayer works. And so if you haven't been praying, you better start praying. Um, So thank you guys so much. Um, So... I hope you guys join us next week, Tuesday, again, for another Testimony Tuesday Live. This is a great way to keep your faith going. This is a great way to be encouraged, but not only by the word, but tangible testimonies that indeed God is real, that indeed God is really doing things for other people's lives. And if he did it for them, he can do it for you too. The same way the people in the Bible, if he did it for them, he's continuing to still do it. The Bible is still being written till this day. So thank you guys all so much for joining with us once again. And we will see you next week on OKT. TV's Testimony Tuesday Live Edition. Thank you guys, and don't forget to give if you are let to. The Lord bless you for joining me today. I just want to share with you that we do have our testimony service coming on. It will start on Tuesday, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. on our church page. Make sure that you come and testify. Why is it so important for you to testify? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible says that for they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That means testimony is a weapon that overcomes the enemy. God has done something for you uh, what you need to do you need to testify to complete the deliverance or what God has done to, to establish it without testimony what God has done will not be established when we look at Luke chapter 17 we saw a story there uh, with um, the, there were 10 lepers who were healed by Jesus and the Bible says that only one returned to Jesus to testify about his healing and when he testified he received wholeness because Jesus said that because you have testified and you have come to give thanks uh, may you be made whole and so there's a difference between being healed and being made whole uh, being made whole that means that you become a new person all together but uh, being healed that there will be still scars of your disease and so what you need to do is God if God has done anything for you you want to come on this live streaming uh, event on Tuesday and share your testimony with the church share your testimony with the world and it will seal your deliverance, it will seal your healing, and it will make you whole. It will make your deliverance complete. And so please make sure this coming Tuesday and every Tuesday, 6 p.m., live on Kingdom Full, tapping out the church page on YouTube, on Facebook, on Periscope, and also on our church website, kftchurch.com. Please make sure to come and give your testimony. If God has done anything for you, please send us an email at info at kftchurch.com and then we will follow up with you and give you a time slot for your testimony. God bless you and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye. Praise the Lord.